When we're walking, we're not really thinking about what we're doing. But in fact, walking is a very complex movement that requires us to coordinate the motion of all sorts of different parts of our body so that our feet are able to land exactly in the right place and at the right time. If you imagine you're in the gym and you're walking or running on a treadmill, but it's a special treadmill, and instead of always moving at the same speed, this treadmill can control the speed underneath each side of the body independently. When you're first exposed to this condition, you'll have an asymmetric walking pattern. But over the course of a few minutes, we actually learn to adjust our walking so that our overall gait is more symmetrical. And we do this, and this is not just a change in the reaction to the speed of the treadmill belts, but it's actually something that's learned and stored in the brain. And we can see that this is something that's actually been learned because then if you suddenly put the two sides of the treadmill back at the same speed again, you see that people have asymmetries in the opposite direction. So this is evidence that they've actually learned to adjust their locomotor patterns over just the course of a few minutes so that they're generating a different motor command when they're walking. We know that the cerebellum is important for learning to correct for gait asymmetries on this split belt treadmill. And my PhD student, Dana Dharma Ray, built a split belt treadmill for mice so that we could start to understand the neural circuit mechanisms underlying this behavior. What we found is that mice learn to adjust their locomotor patterns in a way that is remarkably similar to what's previously been described in humans. So just like humans, mice learn to adjust both where and when they're putting their paws down in order to regain gait symmetry during this uh, split belt walking. So we analyzed how much each of the four limbs of the mouse contributed to this learned symmetry. And what we found was that there were actually differences in how the individual limbs contributed to the learning. The limbs on both sides of the body were adjusted in order to regain spatial symmetry, meaning where the limbs were going down. But we found that there were really special contributions from the front fast paw of the mouse for learning to adjust the time or when the paw was going down relative to the other paws. And this might seem like a detail, but it was really interesting to us because it also implied that there might be differences in the neural circuitry underlying the space and the time component of learning. We found that when we manipulated activity on one side of the cerebellum, it didn't matter which side we were on, we saw that we would impair the ability to adjust where the feet went down but we only saw impairments in when the foot went down when we were on the same side of the brain as the side of the body that was exposed to the faster belt. This form of split belt walking is actually used as a rehabilitative therapy in humans for um, patients, stroke victims, for example, who have asymmetric gaits. And we hope that someday, by understanding the mechanisms through which this learning happens, that we might be ultimately able to apply those in order to improve uh, the efficacy of these kinds of treatments.